I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. So tonight we're on love, hopes, all things, or love always, hopes. We're tempted to lose hope in these days of departure from God's word. We are tempted to lose hope in days of moral darkness and opposition to the gospel. We're tempted to think about the kind of world that our children or our grandchildren will will face in maybe 10 or 20 years from now, and we begin to lose hope. Indeed, maybe even more personally, you might be losing hope as you begin to think about your own future, health concerns, financial worries, coping with retirement, and as We approach the end of our time in this world, the approach of death. And it can be easy to lose hope. Uh, David says in Psalm 27, verse 13, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He was tempted to lose heart, to lose hope. Uh, Psalm 42, verse 11, the psalmist writes there, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Despite all the various things that may have been getting the psalmist down, despite his disquiet, still there is hope. There was hope for him in looking unto the Lord. Again, Psalm 146, verse 5, we read, Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. And again, the psalmist finds hope and happiness in the Lord. But what then is this connection between hope and love in 1 Corinthians 13? Love hopes all things. And I think it's best seen when we first of all look at the love of God. Remember that this love in 1 Corinthians 13 is the very love of God. This is the way God loves us, his children. And when we are filled with God's love, when we live in the light of God's love, when we take the time to meditate upon God's love, then we feel it, don't we? Hope rises. God's love begets hope. Even if we are scared of the way the world is changing, even when we are anxious about our own circumstances, when we remember that we are loved with God's never stopping, never giving up, always and forever love, then our hearts begin to lose the disquiet and our hearts begin to hope afresh and our hearts are steadied by that love of God. All is well because I am loved by God. It is well with my soul. Even if I am faced with my own death, the love of God still begets hope because his love is stronger than death. Kind of brings Romans 8 into view when we think that way. If God is for us, who can be against us? And yes, people are against us. It happens 
challenge, doesn't it? And we're, we're tempted to lose hope when we see that, when we feel that, especially when those who are against us have far more sway and they're more powerful than us. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who is he who condemns? And we are charged. And we are condemned by others. At times it's even our own heart that charges us and condemns us. But Romans 8 again reminds us Christ died for us. Why? Because he loves us. And who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, none of those things can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. His love brings hope. Hope for all things. Love hopes all things. 1 Peter 1 verse 3 describes our hope as a living hope. A hope that is born out of Christ's abundant love. And a hope that rests on the fact of Christ's own resurrection from the dead. Because he lives again. And because he loves us. We will live forever with him. Our hope is rooted in his love. Our hope in his love is solid rock. This love of God begets solid hope in God. But it doesn't stop there. This same love of God pervades all of our relationships. We are to love others with this same love. That's what we've been looking at over the past weeks and months. And because this love of God is so amazing, because it's so transforming, then it ushers hope into all of our relationships. It, it sees hope in all things. Love hopes all things. It hopes for good in all things. Because God works all things together for the good of his people. It hopes for clarity out of confusion. It hopes for order out of disorder. It even hopes for good out of evil. Love hopes the best of people. And it's not just, you know, blind optimism. Because this hope, it's founded on the love of God. His love transforms people's lives and our kind of prime example here is the author of this letter the apostle paul after he's converted on the road to damascus uh, ananias he heard he was coming to see him uh, act 9 verse 13 he said lord i have heard from many about this man how much harm he has done to your saints in jerusalem but then the lord said he is my chosen vessel to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Love hopes all things. And those hopes are far bigger you know, than what we often imagine. With the love of God at work, there is hope for the vilest offender why we sang the song to God be the glory the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives there is hope for the vilest and there is hope for the weakest saint as well in Romans 14 Paul begins by saying receive one who is weak in the faith and then he goes on to give this reassurance in Romans 14 verse 4 indeed the weak one he will be made to stand for God is able to make him stand. So have hope for yourself as a weak saint. And hold on to hope for others in the church. Sometimes, you know, we can see other people's weaknesses far quicker than our own. But hold on to hope for them as well. Even if that weakness or that, you know, sinfulness even comes against you. Remember, hold on to hope because God is able to make them stand. And yet such hope is often tested 
by the bad behavior of God's saints. Yes, we can be quick to see and remember one another's faults. But that's exactly why Paul is writing this letter to the Corinthian church. He has not given up on them. He is still hopeful for them. But boy, did they test that hope. Let me give you some examples from the letter. Chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, Paul writes this. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you're still not able, for you're still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? And yes, they were. They were being carnal, being worldly in how they thought and how they treated each other. But still, love hopes all things for them. So he writes the letter. Chapter 4, verse 6, Paul says that they're puffed up and they're against one another. Chapter 5, verse 1, he says that he's heard about their sexual immorality. And they're guilty of stuff that the pagans don't even name. They won't even talk about it. But those in the church in Corinth are guilty of it. Chapter 8, verse 11, Paul says they're sinning against one another and against Christ. In chapter 12, Paul likens the church to a body of many different parts. And then he picks out you know, the attitude which is prevailing there in Corinth, where one member says to another, I have no need of you. I mean, they really tested his hope for them. But he still writes to them. And if you read the introduction, you know, he writes to the church of God. To those who are sanctified in Christ. And he thanks God for them. And he thanks God for the grace that they have already received in Christ. He's still hopeful for them. How can he still be hopeful for this awful church. With so many problems and sins. Because he knows firsthand What the love of God can do. So love hopes all things. So don't give up tonight. No matter what you're facing, no matter if things seem to be falling apart, no matter even if the Lord's people are failing you, instead, let's fill our hearts and souls with the love of Christ. Because He can change the hardest hearts He can bring us through the toughest circumstances. He can even transform Corinthian saints into the perfect image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Love hopes all things. Amen. Let's pause and pray, please. Father God in heaven, pray indeed would you fill us again with your stupendous love with this amazing grace Lord that we've been seeing over the previous weeks and months your love it is amazing and your love it has this amazing transforming ability turning Saul of Tarsus into the Apostle Paul turning sordid sinners into perfect saints Lord, we feel at times the hope we have even for our own self is running low. Lord, help us to look to you and your love that our hope may rise. Lord, at other times we, our hopes are, are very low for those round about us in the church. Lord, help us to see that your love, it, it's for the weakest of the saints. And Lord, even for all the wickedness in the world that we see round about us, 
Lord, so much of it would drive us to despair. But Lord, we want to see your love at work, transforming sinners into the children of God. Lord, fill us with your love that we may that we may feel your hope rise in our hearts. Lord, help us to be here where the Apostle Paul was in the firm belief that love hopes all things. Oh Lord, hear our prayers for Jesus' sake.